Hello, hello, hello. This is Rupesh, and you're watching C B Nerd's video series on C plus plus threading topics. And this one is an standard or std lock function this is very important function don't take it easy because it is really very important i'm telling you and watch this video till end so that you can understand the topic very well so let's start this so the std lock in c plus plus threading used to lock mutexes but it is very special kind of function which actually allows you to lock multiple mutexes okay it is used to lock multiple mutexes at the same time Okay, wait a minute. Now, another thing which is very important about this is it tries to lock all the mutexes in deadlock free manner. I mean, if there is the situation like this kind of situation would not come if you will use lock and if you want to lock mutexes and you are using this function. Didn't understood much? No problem. We'll, we'll see all these things. We have so many examples here. Okay. So let's first go for the important points. The syntax looks like this and this std lock is a function m1, m2, m3, m4. There can be n number of mutexes or lockable objects and one more important thing. The lock sequence, like if you have given M1, M2, M3, M4, then the locking sequence would not be guaranteed that it would be M1 first, then second, then third, then fourth. No. Actually, all arguments are locked via a sequence of call to lock, which is a mutex lock, okay, and try lock, which is on mutex. So, what are these functions are, it is like M1 dot lock. And this function is this one, std lock. So let's suppose your thread starting here and ending here, it needs so many mutexes to be logged to perform some job, okay? And then it will release all those mutexes and it will be done. But it needs so many mutexes because maybe it is trying to access three, four critical data or critical sections to produce something. So in that case, you should always go for std lock and that's very good thing about it. So the first point is this one, it can try internally lock, try lock or unlock on all these different mutexes and it will check whether all can be locked. Maybe sequence can be M1 first, M2, M3 and maybe M4 is not lockable. In that case, it will actually wind up everything means it will release the lock of m3 m2 m1 and next order could be m4 then m1 m2 and m3 because m1 actually failed to get locked it means m sorry m4 failed to get locked it means m4 was already locked by some another thread so when it will retry it should not retry with m1 m2 and m3 i mean it can but the best way would be to try m4 first so i'm just telling you that m4 can be tried first so it may change the sequence of locking in another iteration so what i mean to say is see this lock internals we don't know but we can guess so what i'm guessing is let's suppose initially it is going with this order m1 m2 m3 m4 and let's suppose m4 is not lockable in that case we cannot wait for this m4 by holding m3 m2 and m1 in our hand no we have to release them and then wait for m4 otherwise it will be a deadlock situation you will hold for i mean you will hold something and you will ask for something and it may be forming a cycle okay so next order first order could be one two three four next order can be four one two three so actually it could not lock fourth one so it will first unlock this one this one and this one and then it will rearrange the mutexes order to be logged in another iteration so this is zero iteration this is first iteration and then it will wait for this one and by this time suppose this got freed it will hold the lock and it will try for this one and let's suppose this time it was not able to lock this one because when it was waiting for this one this one was logged by some another thread maybe some thread t3 then as i said it cannot hold this lock and this lock and wait for this so it may rearrange like two four one three and then it will wait for this one and obviously it have released 
the lock of these two. So if some another thread is actually waiting for this, they can actually do their job. And this is just my thinking. I'm not sure what they internally do and how they actually do this. This is just my thought. So we were talking about this order. Sorry, point number two, order of locking is not defined. Exactly, because as you can see that it has to try to get all the locks so that we can move forward. But if it is not able to lock any of them, it will rearrange and maybe it will try for that lock first and it will release all the held locks so that it can avoid the deadlock. So this might be the thing what it should be doing, but internally it applies lock, try lock or unlock to actually do all these iterations. Correct? Okay. So as order of locking is not defined, it will try to lock provided mutexes M1, M2, M3, M4 in any order and ensure that there is no deadlock. Yes, this is what it does. That's what I have explained. It will try very hard to not get into the deadlock situation. Okay. And what algorithm it uses, nobody knows that. And it is not mentioned anywhere. And yeah, it is a blocking call means it will block itself. I mean, if you have logged, I mean, if you have called std lock m1, m2, m3, m4. And as I said, if m4 is not lockable, it will release all these locks and wait for m4. So actually it will wake. So this is kind of a blocking call. It is a waiting call. With this much of understanding, let's go for this example. So this is example number zero. This is example number one. This is two and maybe I have three, but it's okay. We'll discuss these three first, then we'll go for third one. Okay. So in first case, there is no deadlock. I have given the comment here. There is no deadlock. Okay. Why? We'll see that. Let's suppose this thread one is running and we applied this lock m1 comma m2 and thread 2 is running and m1 comma m2 and now let's try to understand what is happening here and these two threads are running parallelly and assume that from main function you call them parallelly i mean you created them parallelly then actually both the functions will try to be executed first i mean whatever thread will start for this fu this function will be executed and can you see that if this thread started first and maybe this first reached to this lock and it will try to lock m1 and let's suppose it got the lock and by the time m1 was locked by thread 1 after that thread 2 tried to lock m1 and it could not lock it because it is already locked then it will not go further it will wait here only for m1 okay thread 2 will wait and as m1 is already logged with thread 1 it will go for m2 m2 will also be logged and it will do its job and then remember one thing you have to unlock these two this is not a wrapper this is a function and you are using mutexes then either you have to unlock these mutexes or you pass inside this function i mean this m1 m2 m3 can be an object of log guard or unique log then there is no need to unlock these mutex because those wrappers over the mutex will take care of that but in case of raw mutex when there is no wrapper on it you have to unlock after this lock that example i will show you don't worry about that so as you can see this is never going to be into the deadlock situation and yes i have given a deadlock video there i have explained this with so much of good diagrams and all if you don't understand why it will not be deadlock and the short answer is if you don't want deadlock then always lock in similar order so if you're locking m1 first in one thread then m2 sorry m1 should be locked first in another thread also and the order should be similar let's suppose in thread number one you are locking in m1 m2 m3 then three thread two should also lock m1 m2 and m3 order it should not change the order okay Otherwise, it may fall into this deadlock situation. Okay, so that was the first example. Sorry, zero example. First example is this is also not a deadlock. Yeah, this is very important. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Actually, this is a key to understand this video or the topic. Let's suppose there is the same scenario. These two threads started parallelly and any of these thread can actually lock M1. And by the time it is locking M1, this is actually locking M2. There could be a situation like that. What I'm telling you is, let's suppose at 
वन सेकेंड और टू सेकेंड लेट सपोज एट वन सेकेंड टी वन एंड टी टू एक्चुअली रीच टू दिस लाइन एंड एक्चुअली दे आर ट्राइंग टू लॉक हीयर एम वन विल बी लॉक फर्स्ट एंड देन एम टू विल बी लॉक राइट सो इन थ्रेड वन एम वन इज बींग लॉक एंड एन थ्रेड टू एम टू इज बींग लॉकड इज देर एनी प्रॉब्लम इन दिस नो एम टू इज डिफरेंट एंड एम वन इज डिफरेंट दो सो दे बोथ विल बी एबल टू लॉक दैम सक्सेसफुली एंड लेट सपोज एम टू इज गोइंग टू बी लॉकड बाय थ्रेड वन देन वॉट विल हैपन नाउ सी थ्रेड वन इज एक्चुअली गोइंग टू लॉक एम बाय अनदर सेकेंड और समथिंग एंड डोंट गो फॉर द यूनिट सो आई विल जस्ट टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सेकेंड सो इन सेकेंड सेकेंड एम टू इज गोइंग टू बी लॉक बट एम टू इज ऑलरेडी लॉकड देन थ्रेड वन हैव रियलाइज दैट एक्चुअली एम टू कैनॉट बी लॉकड सो वॉट इट विल डू इट विल रिलीज दिस एम वन एंड एज आई सेट इट विल चेंज द ऑर्डर सो नाउ बिफोर इट ट्राइड एम वन एंड देन एम टू मे बी दिस टाइम इट विल ट्राई टू फर्स्ट एंड देन एम वन ओके सो एम टू विल बी ट्राइड सेकेंड टाइम सॉरी फर्स्ट टाइम एंड एज एम टू वॉज नॉट एबल टू बी लॉकड एम वन वॉज रिलीज एंड एम टू वॉज ट्राइड फर्स्ट एंड वी आर वेटिंग हेयर फॉर एम टू बाय दैट टाइम एज यू नो एम टू वॉज लॉकड बाय थ्रेड नंबर टू सो वॉट इज रिमेनिंग हेयर एम वन सो दिस थ्रेड विल एक्चुअली गो एंड ट्राई टू लॉक वॉट एम वन एंड येस यू कैन सी दैट एम वन वॉज रिलीज देन इट कैन एक्चुअली गेट द लॉक ऑफ एम वन डू इट्स जॉब एंड एंड अनलॉक एम वन एंड एम टू बोथ डोंट वरी अबाउट द ऑर्डर सो दीज टू आर अनलॉक्ड सो एज सुन एज यू अनलॉक एम टू थ्रेड वन वॉज वेटिंग फॉर एम टू राइट देन इट विल गेट दैट लॉक एंड देन इट विल ट्राई टू लॉक एम वन येस नाउ यू हैव एक्चुअली कंप्लीटेड योर जॉब थ्रेड टू इज ऑलरेडी रिटर्न फ्रॉम हियर और एटलीस्ट इट हैव नॉट लॉकड एनी थिंग देन एम टू विल ऑल्सो बी लॉकड और एम वन विल ऑल्सो बी लॉकड सो थ्रेड वन विल ऑल्सो कंप्लीट आफ्टर दिस इट विल गेट एम टू एंड एम वन एंड दिस विल ऑल्सो कंप्लीट सो यू कैन सी दैट दिस वॉज द हार्डेस्ट सीनारियो पॉसिबल इन दिस केस सो आफ्टर अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट एग्जाम्पल नंबर वन वी कैन सी एग्जाम्पल नंबर टू and this is also no deadlock situation so let's suppose these two threads are trying to acquire the lock of m1 m2 m3 in thread 1 and thread 2 have this strategy to lock the same mutex is here and this is a no deadlock situation why don't worry about the unit of all these 1 2 3 4 okay so thread 1 actually got the lock of m1 and thread 2 actually got the lock of m3 okay and then there is no issue because m3 is not logged and we will assume there are only two threads in the system okay and then thread 1 will obviously go for m2 after this m2 and thread 2 will go for m4 no problem till now no problem after this let's suppose either of this will actually go ahead and let's suppose this one reached or tried to log m3 first then actually thread 2 try to log m1 we have to assume this m3 actually tried to be logged first by thread 1 and thread 1 saw that oh oh m3 is already logged by thread 2 actually m thread 1 doesn't know by which thread it is logged but it will get to know that okay it is already logged then in that case exactly it will release the lock of 2 and 1 and as i said before the order was actually like this but we failed at this position now the new order would be yes the new order would be something like this let me draw it 3 1 2 and 4 and this is just my assumption that new order should be like this and actually lock will try to lock this one and it will wait for this one and as thread 1 have already unlocked and on and i'm 2 this thread 2 will go ahead and it will try to lock m1 exactly it will be able to lock it m2 exactly it will be able to lock this and thread 2 will do its job afterwards and then unlock all these four mutexes and as soon as it will unlock m4 sorry m3 we were waiting for m3 right here this will actually get the lock and then it will try to lock 1 2 4 and it will get lock for everything and this will also proceed 
so there is no deadlock in this but wait a minute this will have deadlock and we will see why and you can guess also because this lock function is totally different and this one is different and once this lock will be able to lock m1 and m2 without any issue it will think okay let's go ahead and once m3 and m4 will be allowed to be locked because no one is actually have locked them okay so as you can understand the scenario here whenever it will come for m1 and m2 it will think that okay it can be locked so it will lock m1 m2 both and let's suppose parallelly this one was also executed m3 was not locked by any thread right so m3 will get locked m4 will get locked and then simultaneously both will go for next line and here is the problem lock will wait for m3 because m3 was already locked and this lock will wait for m1 because m1 was already locked and they both will keep on waiting and this is a big deadlock so let's see the example and close this video so here i have taken the example number 1 which is something like this lock m1 m2 and then m2 m1 okay and this is very beautiful code and see we have two threads task 1 and task 2 and we will be looping through this lock m1 m2 and m2 m1 can you see the order m1 and m2 and m2 and m1 so this is a very beautiful scenario and don't forget to unlock it so let's quickly run this i have compiled it successfully and now if we, i will just simply run this see actually it is running parallelly i don't know you are able to see this but it is actually running and task 1 and task 2 is getting printed so many times in loop okay i don't know you can see that or not let me just close this see i have breaked it now you can see there are so many printf can you see this task a task b see now it is task a okay so did you feel there was any deadlock no there was no deadlock at all but i can show you the deadlock if you will not use this and let's hope we will get the deadlock because getting deadlock also in these days is not that easy you know because systems are so fast that they can execute in between that time span and you will not face deadlock and you might think that deadlock has gone from the computers but actually it is not okay so let's comment out this one and let's try to compile this okay compile successfully if i will execute this okay see it is static now it did executed some time maybe till good amount of time i don't know i am not able to reach that place see i have reached yeah see can you see this before actually i killed this task and then i executed this so it was actually running till so long time see after that after this a is changing here also okay now it is stuck here see nothing is refreshed so this is a deadlock and yes we can see the deadlock correct and one more thing guys this video was about locking multiple deadlocks so whenever sorry multiple mutexes and whenever you, there is a situation to lock multiple mutexes first thing you have to do is you have to lock them in the same order to actually avoid the deadlock but in some situations it is not possible then you can actually go with this kind of locks and there is another thing you have to unlock these things later because this will actually lock it it will not unlock it after using this one so if you don't want to unlock them you have to use either of the wrapper unique lock or lock guard but there is another wrapper which is called scoped lock which is in c++ 17 that i will explain you tomorrow okay and that is also very beautiful thing actually they have done one thing they have combined this strategy with lock guard i mean it seems that they have done this so we'll see that tomorrow thanks for watching guys so if you really like the video please let me know in the comment section and do like the video if you like the video and subscribe for my channel if you want to see more content like this i'll see you in the next video bye bye